Good morning and welcome back to the channel. It's Richard from Power Lines to Power Naps. Sunday morning. Welcome to Sunday morning. My first coffee. Wow, that's better. Down here at my coffee corner in Newey's Kitchen. Like I say, it's Sunday morning. Uh, about 7.30. Bit overcast, a bit cloudy. So hot. Yesterday, I think, was the possibly hottest day I've experienced in a long while. Got to have been touching 50 degrees. So today we're going to have a little. Uh, I'm going. Well, I'm going to have a little talk. Uh, for those of you that have watched some of my Facebook uh, page as well, will have realised, or maybe not, that I managed to successfully join the uh, Royal Thai tourist police volunteer unit um, something I've wanted to do for a while took me over 12 months to get in really enjoy it uh, I'm linked to Patong Bangla Road very lively little place if you've not heard about it or you've not been to it Google Bangla Road Patong you might even see me on one of the films but I'm just gonna have a little chat about some of the things I've encountered and some of the things that happen to tourists as the name states Thai tourist police so we're there to help tourists at all times so some crazy things some funny things but I'm just going to share with you today uh, without mentioning any names of course or I try not to make, mention any nationalities uh, I'll list a few of the most common problems that we see coffee first don't rush a good thing see you after the intro hi I'm Richard welcome to my channel from power lines to power naps this is my wife Nui together we both left the UK in February 2022 to start and enjoy a new life and new adventures in Phuket, Thailand. Join us on our new journey together and experiences. Sit back and enjoy. Welcome back. So at the moment it's it's been so hot, uh, it's the hottest time of the year and yesterday I think and a few days up before it's actually been touching 50 degrees in the sun with a lot of humidity. So I thought today for today's talk I'll have a ride to somewhere different and I've ridden up the mountain from where we live in Soy 20 in Caron and I've come up to this most little peaceful, tranquil, beautiful temple up on the mountain top. Really peaceful and I've got a bit of shade here so I can talk without being too hot. Uh, I spoke to the head monk here some many weeks ago and I was talking to him in town and, uh, and he said I was most welcome to come up to this temple anytime I like to sit quietly, find a bit of shade, make a film, talk to you guys. I'll just show you briefly where I am, turn the camera. Okay, it's very, very peaceful. It's a beautiful temple. Not too many monks, I believe there's uh, six or seven monks in this temple. Very clean, very beautiful and nice and shady. So it's in a lovely setting up in the mountains in the jungle surrounded by natural beauty. Absolutely amazing. Just birds and wildlife. And a little bit of knocking. Someone's doing a bit of DIY. Thai style. Really beautiful. Anyway, back to me. Sorry about that. We've got some ladies in the background there. Having a little chat. So the subject today... Um, the Thai Tourist Police Force, which I'm now uh, happily assisting in the form of volunteer officers. 
first formed, I think it went back, dates back to about 1976 when it was initially formed. I have made some notes, so I will be just checking uh, my notes, uh, memory of a goldfish. 1976, it dates back to being formed. And then again, since then, it's been increased and worked upon and built upon um, up till about 1992, 93. And it's at the full force that it is now. Um, it is what it says, Thai Tourist Police Force. It's for the safety and well-being of tourists, not rocket science. And they dedicate all their time with the Thai officers, assisted by us volunteer officers, to uh, do shifts and patrol various parts uh, on the island, festivals, carnivals. And we're here, as the motto says, we are your number one friend. So we're not here to lock you up, we're not here to, we're here to help. If you have a problem, we can help. There's also um, a free app for tourists you can download onto your, onto your smartphone. And it's simply called I Alert You. That's I, check his note, L-U-R-T-U. That can be downloaded and used on your phone and that's available 24 hours a day. So if you have a problem and there's no one about, you can use that app and assistance will be with you very quickly. Um, the tourist police department was uh, originally um, part of the Thai Royal Thai Police. So my role and my colleagues' roles as volunteers is to help you, help the tourist in any situation. We assist the Thai officers, and if there's a translation or a, a language barrier, then we're there to, to assist and mediate and hopefully solve your problem. So quickly, and not in any order, I'm gonna tell you about a few of the situations that I've encountered so far in the, just a couple of months. So I actually do a few shifts on Bangla Road, like I said before, up in Patong, night shifts, and there's many things happen. Now, before I go on, I don't want this to be putting anybody off Phuket, Patong, Bangla Road, the entertainment zones. They're really, really, really safe environments. Some of these incidents, very, very rare occurrences, and they are dealt with fairly, uh, quickly, quite discreetly, uh, and, and some of the more drunken antics that happen do not affect or interfere with the, the normal fun-loving drinking tourists. They're rare. So in no order, no particular order, I'm gonna work through a few things, some amusing, I'm not been mentioning any names or nationalities for obvious reasons. So I'm going to go on to the first one on my list, which is drunks. Now, Bangla Road is full of bars, clubs, live music, discotheques. It's a party, so it's a, it's a holiday makers party capital. So many people get drunk, various forms. The Thais are quite happy to tolerate happy drunks. Not a problem. You're on holiday. Enjoy yourself. Occasionally, some people have a little bit too much. And 90% of the time, they're with friends. So 90% of the time, their friends deal with them, help them, get them home safely. Uh, and our involvement is very limited, maybe pointing them to the tuk-tuk or taxi rank. Occasionally, we come across <coughs> some unconscious drunks on their own either on their own or they've been abandoned by the mates and the mates have gone back or onto other bars and we occasionally get an unconscious drunk in a doorway or on a pavement. Not nice guys, it's too much drink if it's done that to you. Sometimes there's maybe not just drink that gets them into that state. So it's either first aid, initiate first aid, if need be, it's an ambulance and a trip to hospital for them. But if we can, we try and work out just how bad they are. And, and most times we can bring them round one way or another, with the magic ice water tricks and 
talking to them. We can search them for their benefit so we can find out a what nationality they are so we know what language we're trying to communicate with them and uh, we normally bring them round and maybe maybe we can find a hotel room card on them which tells us which hotel they're staying in and very often we can assist them and if they come round okay we, we assist them and sometimes take them safely back to their hotels to make sure they're off the streets and tucked up back where they should be. <coughs> Not normally uh, violent, they're normally out of it. Next, people lost or lost properties. Many people lose things all over the world. They lose the iPhones, they lose the wallets, some lose the mind, memory. People get lost, generally sober people sometimes get disorientated or lost. We get many requests to say, do you know where this hotel, do you know where that hotel? Please can you help me, direct me? Very simply we do. Uh, we can either point them in the right direction, take them, or even bob them in the back of a tuk-tuk and get them back. As for lost property, sometimes it comes back, sometimes it's handed into the police boxes, um, sometimes it's not, but again they will have a report off the police which then satisfies and covers their insurance um, requirements. So we're there to help for anyone like that. Next one, bike clamping. Motorbikes, many, many thousands of bikes out here. People hire them on a holiday, you ride them round. Now, if you park in the wrong place, park in a legal spot, you'll get clamped. You'll get a chain put through your back wheel and a piece of paper left on the bike. And you have to take the paper to the police station, suck them up and pay the fine. 500 baht normally, about 12 pounds, UK pounds. Pay the fine. By the time you get back to the bike, there'll be um, an officer there to take the chain off. Now, I had a guy a few weeks ago who came to me, I, I, and no parking is it's not difficult to work out over here. There's red and white striped curbs, cannot park. There's black and white striped curbstones, you can park. There's many signs, a bit unusual, but some say no parking on this side of the road on even days of the month. The other side of the road, no parking on this side on odd days of the month. Strange, but fairly easy to follow. And if you're not sure when you come in on holiday, for God's sake, most of you sensible people, do a bit of research. Find out things that, that you need to know. If not, then you can ask someone. But this guy came and uh, he'd been clamped, he'd been chained. He asked me how to go about it. And I said, you need to take the paper to the police station pay your 500 baht fine and someone will come back and unchain your bike and away you go and you learn your lesson. Uh, well, apparently it turned out it was my fault. I've been blamed for worse, but it was my fault for not explaining to him all the rules and road traffic rules in Thailand. Yeah, you, you're right. He should have looped. He should have asked. But then he took the hump and he said, uh, my bike goes back tomorrow, hire bike, goes back tomorrow. I fly home in three days time, the bike can stay there. I don't care, I'm not paying the fine, it can stay there. So I said, entirely up to you, but beware, because when your bike doesn't get returned tomorrow, they've got your passport details from when you hired it, it will be reported as missing, it will be found very quickly chained, and it will be logged as an unpaid fine. And that will be logged on the system, on his immigration system. So I said, when you return to your airport for your uh, return flight home in two, three days time, you're liable to have a surprise saying, sorry, you cannot travel. Uh, we've got a, still got an unpaid fine here. No, you cannot pay it at the airport. You've got to go back into town, go to the police station, pay your 12 pound, 500 baht, clear the fine then you can come and fly. By that time, guess what? You missed your flight, so you've got to pay for another flight. You've got to be careful, and it's, uh, you can be, you can be, uh, 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 well, you can be caught out just through being silly. We know most of you are not silly. Uh, another story, um, another thing, only last week actually, a couple of guys came to me and, and one of my colleagues to say that he'd entered a club uh, on Bangla Road, 
lovely nightclub, great nightclub, and, uh, and the door people searched him, well, searched them on, on entry, which is standard procedure probably anywhere in the world for nightclubs. <coughs> he then went on to tell me that uh, he'd got a knife on him. And the security guards on the search found the knife, took it off him, let them in the club. He spent a couple of hours in the club, drinking, dancing, partying, came back out and asked the door staff for his knife back. What do you think? The door staff said no. So he came to the tourist police. I think this is theft. They stole my knife. Well, quite clearly he wasn't going to get it back. <laughs> and if he went to get it back, and the tourist police went with him to get it back, once he'd received it, they would probably arrest him for having an offensive weapon on the street anyway, so he'd be in even more trouble. I don't know, some people just don't think, think, but again, they come to us so serious, I want my knife back. Well, I'm sorry, it's, it's not going to happen. Next item. This, this occurs every night, every shift. Guys wandering around Bar Street and town with no shirts on. For goodness sake. I think most places in the world, in towns and nights and bar streets, it's not acceptable to walk around with no shirts. Certainly in Thailand, it's disrespectful and illegal. Okay, if you're on beach, on the beach, or on beach road, fine, you'll you, you'll be fine. You get away. But nightclub, bar, street, middle of town, it's unacceptable, and it's very disrespectful to the Thai people. We ask many people, please put your shirt back on. Uh, quite a lot, most in fact go, oh, sorry, only oh, didn't realise. Um, yeah, very, very sorry, put the shirt on. Shake your hand and, and walk away, apologising. A few, sometimes they've had a bit of drink, but some of them feel a bit braver when they've had a drink and can test it. Argue the point to a degree, but the same result has to happen. They have to put the shirts back on or leave town. Sim it's as simple as that. Um, and for God's sake guys, some of you look a lot better with a shirt on than you do with a shirt off. Keep your shirts on when you're in town at night, especially in Thailand. Fighting. Very rare, so don't think it's a big problem. It does happen. Um, sometimes and very often it can happen with people that are on holiday together. You know, too much to drink, something happens, a bit of an argument, they can end up fighting, even though they're holiday pals. Um, not acceptable. Not acceptable, well, anywhere in the world, I would imagine, and it's certainly not here. Um, things like that, it's not good to see. Here it's dealt with very swiftly. Um, very politely and things get nipped in the bud very quickly and discreetly it's removed from the area and dealt with and and to be fair to the tourist police who are in the middle of this along with us volunteers they're happy to uh, remove them from the area take them somewhere quiet speak to them calm them down give them a warning come on guys what are you doing you're in trouble, you're fighting in the street. Don't spoil your holiday anymore. And if you calm down now, and wind your neck in, shake hands, smile, move on with your night, you're quite happy to walk away from us, and we'll let you go. If not, well, the other option is a night in the police station, and you don't want that, and it's gonna carry a big fine. Um, but rare, so don't let that put you off. These entertainment zones, Bangla Road and various places in Thailand, great places, great places to party. Even if you don't want to drink for excess or you're with a family, it's great places you can go and sit at a bar and watch the world go by. And, and, it, and it's safe, it's very, very safe. Uh, not paying a bar bill is another um, little thing. It happens occasionally. Some genuinely finish the drinks and round the drinks and go to the toilet or whatever, come out and walk away. They call back, they've not paid the bar bill. Oh, most of the time, 
apologies, it was a mistake, we pay and settle and that's fine. Others seem to think it's acceptable to not pay a bill for drinks or food. Again, as anywhere in the world, <coughs> it's not right. And it's certainly not right here. And um, pretty much the um, tourist police view is probably the correct one. They attend, they talk. But if you've ordered the food or the drinks and you've eaten the food or drank the drink, whatever your argument is, I'm sorry, you pay the bill. You don't pay the bill, you come to the police station. That's about the only choice you're going to get. In my mind, you pay the bill. Most peaceful, honest people wouldn't get in that situation anyway. But hey, it's just another one that happens. Uh, swiftly moving on. Club entries. There's many, many clubs, um, disco clubs, nightclubs on Bangalore and various other entertainment zones. Often upstairs on an upper level and they're not all run by Thai people. And they have their own rules. Most people sometimes don't agree with their rules, but it is what it is. It's, it's their club, it's their venue, it's their entry fee, it's their price, drinks, it's their rules. I had a French couple come to... Oh, I said I wasn't going to mention nationalities. Sorry. Other well, countries are available. I had a couple come to me who was a little bit disgruntled some weeks ago that they'd gone to go into one of these clubs and there was an entry fee, which they weren't interested in paying. So they said, no, we, we, we won't come in, we'll leave it. And the door staff quickly said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll waiver the entry fee. You can come in anyway. Um, he asked about the drink prices and they said, yeah, well, you pay 2,000 baht, nearly 50 pounds. 2,000 baht, you get a voucher for your drinks. They went in, paid 2,000 baht, got a voucher, got two drinks, whiskies or rum, or two, two spirit drinks. Now they thought that ticket and that 2,000 baht was for drinks all night. Well, they had a shock when they finished the drinks and asked for second drinks they said another 2,000 baht very expensive so they didn't agree with that they wanted the money back uh, and again these these clubs um, certainly bang the road there's probably I don't know maybe a hundred more good decent bars on the ground floor on the street level with dancers and discos and live music there's none of that you pay what you pay for a beer, what it says on the menu. But it's just a couple of these clubs can get a bit expensive. Wrongly, but what do you do? So they come to us, disgruntled, they want the money back. And um, even though it may be extortion, you're not gonna get your money back. They make the rules to the club, these people go in. When you go in, it's assuming that you're gonna go in and, and and accept and abide what's coming. So my, 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 my advice for that guy was, uh, well, take it on the chin. Every day's a school day. It could have been worse. You could have been faced with a bill of 20,000 baht or more. Stay out of the nightclubs. Certainly the ones on the upper level. Stay in the bars, drink, enjoy. Know what you're paying for. So they actually saw the logic to that and, and realised it was probably their fault for not being vigilant enough and they thanked me very much and they were on the way. So then uh, finally I'm going to go on to, we have loads of general people that stop us. Uh, it says what we are on our uniforms. Uh, we have our own nationality flag on our uniforms as well as the, the Thai flag. So many people stop us just for a chat, just for a talk. Um, some stop us and say, well done, thank you. Thank you for doing a great job. They know that we are there along with our Thai officers to help help the people on holiday. Not to cause them trouble, but to help them any way we can. And we do. So we have lots and lots of thank yous and well dones and shaking hands and general talk about where we come from and 
really nice time, really nice social time with the tourists. Many of the tourists, some of the young ladies, families, people with children, can we have pictures taken with you? Well, of course, that's a huge yes. Us and the Thai officers, more than happy to uh, have pictures with tourists all day long. It's an easy part of the job, for God's sake. Many children want, or the parents want the children to have the pictures taken alongside the police car, maybe wear one of the police caps. And it's a good PR and a good, um, good social event. So we, 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 besides all some of the incidents that I've read earlier, which are extremely rare, most of the time our job helping is a really joyous and very friendly and fun fun time so um that's about it don't let it put you off it's a it's a great place to come great place to uh, have a night out i enjoy doing it i really enjoy doing it and i enjoy supporting um, the thai offices any way we can we help them they help us we all help the tourists um, so I'm going to leave it there for now. Just a little update on uh, looking after tourists. And don't forget, we are your first friend. If you're out here and you see a Thai tourist police officer or a volunteer or me, even if you've not got a problem, come over. Say hi, shake hands, let's have a photo. We'll have a chat. We'll always ask you where you're staying. Are you having a good time? Do you want to know any information? We're here to help. So I'll carry on doing so. Until the next time, I'm going to leave that one there. It's been lovely up here. I will just spin the camera one more time. We close this uh, down. That blue sky is gorgeous again today. And it's really, really warming up there. And if I've got enough battery left, I may take you uh, on the journey back down the mountain, back home. I'll leave that one there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. There's a few subscription numbers going up slowly now. We're getting more comments. I thank you all for that. Please keep the comments coming. Any questions or comments in the comments box, please. I reply to them all. Um, if you've not subscribed, as usual, press the subscribe button. Tell your friends, share, like. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. Bye for now.